Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Copilot Learning Hub. I'm Donna Sarkar, and joining us again is Anthony Bartolo. Last time he was here, he showed us some amazing tricks in Visual Studio Code. If you haven't seen that episode, pause and go check out that episode because it was spectacular. My mind was blown. I did not know half the things that GitHub Copilot could do in VS Code. But today, Anthony is going to show us some nifty tricks of GitHub Copilot and Visual Studio. Hello, Anthony. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you very much for having me back. Uh, always great to be on the show. Tell us about you, what you do, and what you're going to show us today. So I am a principal developer advocate uh, that concentrates on the enablement of you know, people's ideas in AI and cloud on Microsoft's cloud uh, through developer tools that Microsoft offers. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be talking about you know, GitHub Copilot for Visual Studio. So it's not just Visual Studio code that can harness uh, Copilot. Mm -hmm. Visual Studio also has that capability. And what's great about it is if you run both, uh, you know, I've done it where you, you get that idea in the middle of the night and you pull up your laptop mm -hmm. and you're typing away really quickly, I've done it numerous times in VS Code. And then later on, I want to transfer into Visual Studio. You have that ability to access Copilot inside of Visual Studio like you would in Visual Studio Code to continue on your work and to continue on what you're what you're building out. Um, we showed scenarios in uh, VS Code in terms of the harnessing of Copilot. We're going to do the same inside of Visual Studio. It's going to be a little bit different because Visual Studio is a little bit different, right? It is mm -hmm. more extensive in terms of developer tools. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see that a lot of the functionality is actually very similar uh, in terms of what you can accomplish with Visual Studio and uh, GitHub Copilot. OK, that sounds amazing because I know a humongous a humongous audience who use Visual Studio and have for 20 years. And now they're able to supercharge it using the power of GitHub Copilot and the power of AI. And I know they're very, very, very anxious to see what you've got for us. So as we talked about before, right? In the past, you're going to a search engine like Bing. Mm -hmm. You're doing a search of how do I add mm -hmm. X? How do I you know, do Y? Um, most times you're also looking at, hey, I have existing code. I don't know what this code does. The scary thing is people are taking that code and putting it into Jet GPT oh. and telling it, can you tell me what this does, right? Um, everything that goes into Chat GPT is then becomes public domain. And that's the scary thing about all this. The beauty of Copilot means it's running uh, for you inside of your IDE. It only shares that information with you under corporate license, right? In respect to what you're doing. Now, remember, there are different licenses available for Copilot. One's private uh, through corporate, and one is a public domain. In this scenario here, we're showing the private one uh, that you know specifically looks at your code. Uh, it doesn't share out that information. And it has a similar block in terms of what we saw with Visual Studio Code, that if you're trying to import open source code into your corporate environment, corporate um, um, application, it will block that to say, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be uh, incorporating that code. I love that that security factor is there both in VS Code and Visual Studio. That was new information for me, but it's very, very smart because it's such a ask from companies saying, we don't want our intellectual property to be impacted by other people's intellectual property if we're working on not an open source project. So I love that. I love that it's in both of these products. So let's jump right into the demo. And mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to show you my implementation here of Visual Studio. So here is code I've inherited, mm -hmm. right? So oh I'm, uh, I work for a weather company. And they are using this code to display out you know, how the weather is doing in my area. Uh, we have no snow today in Toronto, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's actually a warm day outside. Uh, and so here's all this code. No documentation. I don't know what any of this does. Oh. Uh, what we're going to do is let's select and start deducing what's going on. <laughs> so I'm going to select here, and I'm going to right click. I'm going to ask Copilot. Stop me if you've seen this one already. Uh oh. Explain. Oh. So the slash commands are identical from VS Code. So if you're doing this in VS Code, you can do this inside of Visual Studio. I and so it goes you through can do slash commands in Visual Studio. Did not know that. You got it. So oh. same thing, and it shows you the breakdown step by step of what this data does. So it gets the, the map data for the weather, weather forecast, pulls in the information, uh, the, the block generates the, the forecast code to display. And what's great about this is what do you want to do next? So it's trying again to figure out what are your next steps and what you're trying to accomplish. 
How can I modify this code to generate a forecast for the next 10 days instead of five? How can I add more weather summaries to the summaries array? Well, guess what? I was asked to do a 10 day instead of a five day forecast mm. for the output. So let's click on that. And so now it's going to provide me with the solution of what I need to modify. Oh. So here on the left is the original. Yep. And on the right is the suggested. As you can see, it's changing the range from five to 10. And I can click on accept. And now my code has been changed. So now I have a, a 10 day forecast instead of a five day. OK, I love that. I love that diff where you could see it and say, is this what I want, yes or no? I think that's really, really clever because then you get to make the choices. Again, you as the, co you as the main person, not the co-pilot, not autopilot, et cetera. Correct. You're able to say, yep, this is what I want, um, especially for this code base that you have no idea what it does because you inherited it. So that's Correct. fabulous. So let's take it to the next step now. And I'm going to ask co-pilot, same like we did on the other solution, mm -hmm. document. So now it's going to go through and understand, OK, the selected text. Mm -hmm. uh, summary retrieves the weather forecast and returns an array of weather forecast objects. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And the same thing. It shows the diff screen in terms of what the changes are. I'm going to accept. And there's my comments. Oh, OK. I love that explain functionality so much because that it's probably the thing I use the most, honestly, because working in legacy code bases, half of the time it's what in the heck were you thinking? And I know someone meant to go and write comments, and of course, they moved on to the next thing. And in a large organization, how, many, how much time do we spend inheriting code? All of it. All of it. I love that explain functionality works. So great in line. So great in line. So one more thing to show you, and I know mm -hmm. you get excited about this too, is, mm -hmm. is the slash test command. So same like we had in mm. VS Code. I can go in here and write a test for this code. And it spits it out. And so this is the test I can actually run to ensure that the forecasting will work uh, for the code that's represented. I love that it just writes it there in line. That is so and it, interesting. And you have to accept it, right? Yeah. It doesn't just do it, insert it, yeah. right? And so it provides that information in terms of, hey, you know what? That's cool. I can take this. I'm going to copy it and, and save it for another time. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to implement it in my code, so I'll just click on cancel. And it takes it out. Mm. Now, it, yeah. it, it, it builds it out into its own program test so that you can run it from uh, a separate window. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's based on your code. So it's not mm -hmm. going through, you know, you going through a search engine mm -hmm. to find out, okay, well, how do I write a test for this now? Mm -hmm. Copy, paste, right? Go into chat GPT, copy, no. paste my code, no. which I've seen too many times, right? It's that whole thing where you're doing it inside of your IDE. Mm -hmm. If you have the corporate license for uh, GitHub Copilot, it is secured to your organization, so it doesn't make it publicly available. And it allows you, with context, to understand what am I testing amidst my application. I love this because you're not you're staying away from the entire Stack Overflow search to chat GPT pipeline, right? You're staying out of the whole thing. You're not taken out of Correct. your own context. You're in the tool that you're used to for 20 something years. And it just got a whole bunch of new superpowers to help you get to the actual fun part of your job rather than trying to understand this legacy code base that you got handed. Now, like the VS Code, there mm -hmm. is a dev cloud solution available for Visual Studio. Oh. And that's called DevBox. And the great part of DevBox is it's your Visual Studio in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also have Copilot implemented in that as well. It requires zero install on your machine. And there's the ability to apply governance uh, to DevCloud, uh, to, sorry, to DevBox uh, for that implementation. So DevBox gives you that dev container in the cloud mm -hmm. for the ability to access your Visual Studio that multiple people can share in terms of what you're working on together. Uh, the Copilot suggestions are individualized, mm -hmm. so it would be specific to an individual's account on GitHub. And you would have the ability to make the uh, changes to the code as required that you're allowed access to amidst the government's implementation. OK, I love that because you do have your in the cloud version for Visual Studio for all of the devs who have Visual Studio licenses, which is a humongous part of the world. And I've had a chance to use DevBox. And what I found so fascinating about it was how fast it was to set this up. It was two minutes, and I've got a copy of my DevBox ready to go to do you know, all these 
somewhat random experimental projects, or I'm you know onboarded to some guest account, fix their issues, and then but I don't need this on my machine forever and ever and ever. But having Copilot be enabled for that, that's magical because we got that feedback, right? Which is I got so used to Copilot on my main machine that not having it available in the shared workspace was brutal. And that's the thing, it, it takes away the guesswork in terms of what do you have access to, right. right? The governance rules that are implemented into DevBox, if you're only allowed to work on the front end, that's what your access right. provides. If you're disallowed from the back end because there are some data sets that are secure and not everybody should have access to it, it has that availability as well. And then Copilot adheres to what you have access to. So if you are specifically working on the front end, you're asking questions of the front end, mm -hmm. it's not going to provide you the access to the back end either and will only provide you suggestions in terms of the code that you're working on specific to your environment. I love that because that's like your quote, air quotes, dev graph that you have access to. Yeah. Yep. I love it. This is fantastic, Anthony. Thank you so much for joining us. I did not know Visual Studio that we've known for so long had all of these cool tricks. Oh, and there's more coming. Uh, I know that very soon you'll see a lot more announcements in terms of further integration of Copilot into Visual Studio to bring it that much more forward in the adoption of AI from a Copilot perspective, not a pilot perspective. You are still in the captain's chair in regards to where you're flying your application to, but Copilot will help you in terms of the navigation and how to ensure that the uh, application is built the best way possible so that your end users really can achieve what they're trying to achieve amidst your app. I love this. And what I really like, Anthony, about all of these demos is you actually do need to be a dev to be able to use GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio correctly. And it, it really helps those of us who've been doing this for a long time to do it faster. But it also helps those of us who are learning, say, a different language or inherited some code base be able to do it, again, faster. So just it, it um, halves the learning curve. I think that's what I've taken away from this episode with you today. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, this has been awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony, so much for being with us. And to everyone else, tune in next time for another episode of Copilot Learning Hub. See you then.